And so moving on now to we're going our next presentation is going to um, we're going to hear from IBM about uh, their plans for the open footprint. And um, Sonia van Ballare and uh, has 25 years of international experience driving technology led business transformation. She currently works as IBM Global Client Director for Shell. Sonia is an IBM Distinguished uh, Industry Leader for Chemicals, Petroleum, and Industrial Product Sectors, focused on new strategies and offering around sustainability and energy transition. She is also the Executive Sponsor for the IBM's Sponsorship of women in mining. So Sonia, I'll turn it over to you. All right, Heidi, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, and um, let me start by saying how happy I am that uh, we are all here together, um, you know, to talk about and think about and progress a topic that's uh, clearly very dear to our own hearts and, um, and to those of, you know, our future generations. Um, um, I think the title said IBM's plans for open footprint, and I must admit that I cannot give you all of IBM's plans for open footprint. What I can give you today um, is one really concrete industry example of where we are applying open footprint. And I know it's early days, we're at MVP1, nearly there, um, you know, but we really have one concrete industry example of what open footprint really means in practice. And so, as I said before, I'm not going to disclose all of IBM's plans because they are far and many, but I can really dive deep on this particular example because I've been working that actually together with Shell uh, for many months. So, um, where I'm going to take you, uh, and you heard that I'm sponsor for women in mining, is I'm going to take you into the mining industry. And the mining industry is not one that we see and hear a lot of, but actually, when you think about it, it underpins 47% of our global economy. The house you live in, the steel and concrete that is used to build it, originates in mining. The car you drive or the bus or the bike or the phone that you use has got tens of minerals in it, otherwise it wouldn't work. And so just about every single object that we use, whether that be of transport or in an industry, or indeed even in the consumer world, is underpinned by some element of mining. And when you look at the industry as a whole, it contributes an estimated 6 to 8% of greenhouse gas emissions globally. Of course, coal plays a key role in that, but even without coal, if you take the value chain of minerals, metals and cement, we're still talking about 3%. So exiting coal will still leave us with 3% of global emissions coming from the mining industry. And then think about the energy transition and what they call the critical minerals that are required to make our new energy system work. Our electrical vehicles, for instance, you see this on the chart, will have many more critical minerals required you know, than a traditional automobile. And similarly, when you think about a wind farm or a solar panel or a battery, we will need far greater quantities, actually unimaginable quantities of cobalt, nickel, zinc, copper, more than we have ever unearthed today. And so this is a carbon intensive industry that's actually underpinning our entire new energy system. And environmental sustainability is not new to the mining industry because whilst the footprint on greenhouse gases is large, also, the impact on land use is very large. The amount of water used to separate the ores from the earth are huge. And of course, there is a lot of waste if we don't manage to recycle the minerals in the first place. So also circularity is a huge topic for the mining industry. So when you talk about a footprint, this industry has got a huge footprint and it is one that will not disappear and we need to tackle it. So enter um, an idea that um, we actually had together with the Shell company and the IBM company 
to start looking into how we can help this mining industry through advanced digitalization to tackle not just their operational issues, but also their sustainability issues. So together we actually created the first business to business marketplace for digital solutions for the mining industry and these adjacent industrial sectors that I mentioned, such as metals, cement, and eventually construction. Because as I said before, these things are intimately interconnected and their value chains cannot be separated from each other because it's the raw ores, the iron ore, you know, that leads to the metals that you need to build your house. And so this business to business digital solutions marketplace allows the mining sector, which is actually not highly digitized to begin with, to look for solutions, standalone solutions or solutions they can integrate into um, their existing systems to increase operational efficiency and to really start thinking about the linkages between operations and sustainability. And think about this, when you make a case to a miner that says you will increase your uptime, you will also um, uh, decrease your cost, and in so doing, you will diminish your carbon footprint. You've got a fantastic case, of course, you know, a fantastic case to really think about what digital can mean to lower the footprint of mining and at the same time present a fantastic business case. There is only one requirement, and that is that we are able to actually understand the footprint in the first place. And so I'm coming back to the point the previous speaker made, which is that of data. Do we even understand the environmental footprint of an industry as large and also varied and broad and worldwide as mining? To understand that, we need to have something like and this is proper to say in mining, a gold standard for data, for footprint data. And this gold standard would allow things such as benchmarking companies against each other, understanding the footprint of suppliers, understanding the impact when you transport your goods, and understanding eventually the full value chain in terms of its footprint. And just one more point on the value chain. When you think about iron ore, and I've made the point that, you know, 3%, even if you eliminate coal, 3% of greenhouse gases will come from mining such minerals. The shipping industry contributes 2.5% of global emissions. Iron ore needs to get shipped and it's heavy and it travels far. And when steel is produced, it goes somewhere else in the maritime industry, traveling far again. So when you add that up, 3% of mining, 2.5% of shipping the ores and the steel around, and then I'm not even talking about the heat required to produce steel, measuring across this value chain and tackling this problem together as a value chain will make a major, major contribution to diminishing our overall greenhouse gas footprint. So of course we need this data gold standard to look across these companies with connected value chains. And that's why we believe that a platform like Orem will make a major contribution to decarbonization through digital collaboration. In other words, an individual company's excellence is not going to be enough to decarbonize a value chain. And you will need a, a building block like Open Footprint as this gold standard of data to underpin transparent reporting, including data exchanges and sharing with suppliers and customers and tracking together with adjacent industries. And there are some very, very promising developments in mining because what we actually see is that mining companies are reaching out into their customer base to create such ecosystems, digital ecosystems, data-based ecosystems to tackle some of these footprint challenges together. And of course, Open Footprint is a key building block. And so on the Oran platform, we have all intention of putting Open Footprint as the gold data standard for the applications that we will have around emissions, but also, for instance, around tailings management, which is the waste that comes from mining. There's some detail on these charts about the platform technology 
Suffice it to say that we want this to be as open as possible, as much pulling on open standards and open data, and as much cloud agnostic based on some hybrid cloud architecture so that you can move applications around and people can run them anywhere, including in places that have data residency requirements, which mining does have a lot of, because mining operations happens in country such as, you know, in Central Africa, some countries in, in um, South America that would have strong data residency requirements. So let me pause there and perhaps open for some dialogue and, and some questions. There's one question, uh, uh, Sonia. How open is open? How open is ORN? Sorry, can companies use without work with IBM, for example? Question mark. Yes, absolutely. So ORN currently on the platform, there are 60 different uh, companies and solutions represented. There are a few solutions from IBM, but most vendors actually come from a broad ecosystem. So there are startups on there. Uh, there are some solutions that Shell developed. There are some solutions, as I said, that IBM developed. And any sort of really vetted vendor party can join the platform and you know connect. Okay. And then the intent is to that the open footprint will be part of the platform to store some of the data you were referring to. Yeah, absolutely. Store and particularly, you know, exchange and, and support this collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are there other questions in the audience? I, I read another one, one additional channel. Um so is what 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 are the timelines you're thinking about at the moment? Well, um, we are currently developing the first use cases uh, around emissions. So I okay. would say ASAP, right? So as soon as we have the MVP one, we'd like to put it on the platform. Okay, very good. Another question: How does ORN relate to Open Footprint? Is 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 this already a done deal? Done deal. Well, you know, the MVP one isn't ready, right? But there has been a, let's say, an, an architecture or platform decision made that yeah. open footprint will be will absolutely be a key building block of the platform. Yes. Yeah. Any, any more questions for uh, Sonia? Yes. What kind of AI capabilities do you think will help the platform members? Which kind of AI capabilities do you think will help the platform members? Well, I would say, you know, any and all AI capabilities will, will help, right? So the mining industry, like any other big asset heavy industry, has such a huge amount and an increasing amount of real time data. And when you think about an energy efficiency problem or any actually operational problem, but let's take energy efficiencies. This is what we're talking about with greenhouse gases. You really need the capability to intervene on almost real time data to do something significant in terms of improving energy efficiency. So, for instance, working with Shell, you know, Shell has data that says a lot of equipment in mining actually has 15% idling time. Now, idling time, you can't do something about idling after the fact. You need to be able to intervene on the spot and stop the idling and thereby save the fuel. So, you know, I think there is huge promise in applying any and all AI, obviously, you know, decent AI uh, techniques onto especially real time data to intervene in operation. So what we need to get away from is this sort of environmental reporting that happens at the end of the year. And then everybody looks actually quite good. <laughs> um, you know, what you need is interventions in real time so you can actually make an operational impact. And I, that's where I think you need the AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, very much agreed. So okay. I think this was the, no, so another question coming in. Uh, we just got other questions coming in. Can Oren be the ecosystem for miners to share innovation? innovation and digital solutions to them to address sustainability challenges, collaborate, collaborative, collaborate, collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is 100% the intent, right? And so that is why I, I put a lot of um, emphasis also on the value chain. So the role of suppliers to mining, when you think of suppliers to mining, they are, for instance, large equipment providers. 
and then the yeah. customers we've talked about, right? And then I'm not even talking about the shipping industry. So it's exactly this type of collaboration um, that really, you know, Oren is made for in terms of enabling data exchanges and allowing these companies also to think of new applications that they can build on top of that, right? So the intent is not that the IBM company or the Shell company will build any and all applications needed to solve these problems. We need all the creativity we can get, but the Orem platform can facilitate this collaboration. Okay, and uh, well, let's say the last question. Can you provide any insights in the investment required to make this happen? Maybe a difficult question, but maybe. Yeah, <laughs> not really. I, I'm not going to do that, but I would say what was required most of all and again, I come back to the point of collaboration is really intense collaboration between two companies that fundamentally are quite different. You know, IBM is a tech company, you know, Shell is a, is an energy company, um, but we both have deep relations into this mining industry. So we put these sort of three competencies together, the industry expertise, the energy insight and the energy transition purpose that Shell have, and then the tech backbone and the open you know, frame of mind of IBM. And I think it's that collaboration more than the investment you know, that is making this happen. Indeed, yeah. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Sonia. Well done. And it was the last question. Yes. So many, many, many thanks. Uh, very interesting. I'll hand over back to Heidi. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Johan. Sonia, that was excellent. And some really interesting questions. So I, I really like that engagement and seeing that uh, uh, feedback. So wonderful, thank you all again.